The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hello Rovers fans and welcome to another match preview as Rovers entertain Peterborough United at Ewood Park this Wednesday evening. What will be a very cold and frosty Ewood Park as the cold weather comes and sets in the UK and helping me with the match preview tonight. You can see I've got Dan the man back. How are you doing Dan? Yeah, I'm good. Not long in from the 23s, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to Wednesday actually. Yeah, me too. How did the 23s play? Awful first half, decent second half, and then we can see the last minute goal and end up losing 3 2. Two oh. Arsenal were at 10 men at the time, but then uh, Pike got sent off. So, That's yeah, it's not been, the, not been the best evening for them. Oh, dear. Well, hopefully, the first team can improve uh, the feeling amongst the team on Wednesday evening. So, Rovers fans, you know the drill. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button and please give this video a big like for us. And a big thank you to our sponsors, sixyardsout.com and Blue Rose Capital, for their very kind sponsorship. But, Dan, before we get stuck into the preview, we've got two celebrations today, and I'm going to figure out the order to do them in. Let's start with Tyrese Dolan. Literally, at the point of recording this, he has just been named uh, as moment of the season in the Ladbrokes Northwest Football Awards. So, all you Rovers fans that voted for that goal that Tyrese Dolan scored away at Preston last season, and obviously the celebration that he did in tribute to his friend Jeremy, it has had the desired effect, and Tyrese Dolan uh, has been named moment of the season. So, big, big well done to Tyrese Dolan. Um and then the other celebration, uh, again, at the point of recording this on the Monday evening, um, it's Mr. Tony Mowbray's birthday. So there we go. Happy birthday to Tony Mowbray. Uh, there's him holding his cake that he got given by the Rovers staff earlier. And as you can see, he's looking very, very happy with himself on his birthday. So yeah, well done to Tyrese and happy birthday to Tony Mowbray. Yeah, we'll start the preview with a couple of celebrations. Um, so Dan, as we always do then, um, before previewing the upcoming opposition we'll just take a little look back into the last game that we played and it was away at Bristol City um in the last preview that we did we obviously spoke about their home form in general this season we spoke about the fact that maybe they lost a bit of momentum um with getting that first home win and then the international break and Rovers obviously did the very Rovers thing and I do hold a public apology to Alex Lomax who I slagged off for predicting 1-1 he ended up getting me as well <laughs> I was actually quite confident going into that game, but Alex obviously um, knew better than us. But on a serious note, um, it was a poor performance for probably about two thirds of that game, wasn't it? So with the fact it was a poor performance, was it a decent point in the end? Or actually, are you seeing it as an opportunity lost with the fact that their home form is so bad this season? Um, I see it as a point at the end. I think you look at it that, I think any point on the road's a good one, really. I think they say when you're home, draw your away, don't they? Uh, it's one of them, I wrote in the verdict that it's a sign of a good side, though. Not playing your best, taking a point. Although we all want these wonderful performances and we'd all love to win seven now. Mm. You've got to get results where you've got to get results. And I think a point's decent to take away. We've got 10 points in the last 15. You can't grumble at it. No, you can't. And I think something that probably has plagued Rovers for a while um, is the fact that, you know, we do need to go ahead in games of football, uh, usually to get the win. So when we do go behind, um, you know, the best we can hope for on the whole is a draw. Um, so pleasing that, as you say, you know, we've gone away from home, come back and, and got the point in the end. And good to see that that man there, Ben Brereton, has absolutely rasped that ball into that top corner, you know, echoes that Morton Gamps Pedersen goal against Burnley in the FA Cup. So uh, really pleasing for him. And he silenced the crowd who were giving him some stick in that first half as well. So <laughs> 14 league goals for the season. I think Sky Bet are getting more and more anxious because um, I know some people have kept their bets open. They've not done the cash out. So Mr. Diaz is getting close to those 20 league goals. But um, yeah, I see it as a point game, Dan. Um, 
you know, before the game, I was kind of confident with how settled the team was. But after falling behind, as you say, away from home to come back and get that victory, uh, get that draw is um, is good for us. So, uh, yeah, we move on. Um, now, if we just switch focus onto the Peterborough game a little bit, Dan, the talk before the Bristol City game was about the team and the potential squad selection that was available for Mowbray. He opted to reward and keep the faith with those players that did get the result against Sheffield United. So Redder Kadra kept his place, Ian Pervader kept his place, uh, Jacob Davenport kept his place. So we actually had a really strong bench um, away at Bristol City. We had Ayala, we had Pickering, we had Rothwell. Um, we've obviously only got the draw away. Do you think now is the time for Mowbray to be bringing those three in particular back into the starting eleven against Peterborough and get that? 11 that we could all name at the start of the season you know we've spoken about having a smaller squad this season is it back to that 11 for you or is that too harsh on the likes of Edun, Kadra, Davenport etc? Well I'm pretty sure Pickering went on the bench on Saturday which could play its part in mm -hmm. where he plays today uh, on Wednesday sorry uh, I'd definitely bring Ayala in I think we could have conceded three or four if he hadn't come into defence on Saturday. He really reassured us uh, in the air. And I'd like to see Rafael in. I think get that midfield free back, get us firing. I'm not going to go on paper and say we'll win 5 6 now, but this is a game that we could go and say, look at us, we can score four or five, just like the other teams are doing around us. I think I'd like to see us go at the game and put them to the sword within half hour. You know, the first start off. And yeah. just see where it is. I think you like to rough well do it. I all will do it. I'm happier with Ed and or Pickering at left back. I think I'd prefer Pickering. But I'm not too fussed if he misses out. Dan knows his stuff. He's absolutely right. Harry Pickering was not on the bench on Saturday. Um, just looking at the list of substitutes there. So um, yeah, you're right. Maybe that is um is gonna feature in the squad selection. Um I just think can you know. As much as some of those players have done well, Dan, you know, Edun, I think in particular, you know, it'd be quite harsh for him to lose his place. But I do think we had a lot of our early season joy with just being able to name that 11 and over and over. And I just wonder if it's time to reinstate it. And then if we do just need to swap players in and out as injuries and suspensions take their hold, I'd prefer to be doing that. So um, I would be bringing Ayala Pickering and Rothwell back into the side. But we'll talk about that a little bit later, as we always do, when we agree our 11s. So, Dan, Peterborough, um, I think they've always had a reputation of being a side which is um, quite attacking, quite entertaining, scoring a lot of goals. But actually, there's a few damning stats for them this season. Um, I was just looking into it. Um, they've conceded the most in the division overall this season. And then away from home, they've actually scored the joint least and also conceded the most. They've lost eight out of nine games away from home as well. So uh, they are a side that is struggling away from home. Then if you bring in the Rovers home form, I think the Fulham game um, is the only one where we've not scored at home. Uh, and we might have scored two or more in all of the other games as well. So really, we've got lots of reasons to be confident going into this game, haven't we, when you layer their away form and our home form. So how are you feeling about the game? Uh, I don't like saying it, but it has to be three points, doesn't it? Yeah. To put it simply, with all respect to them, the a lower side in this division, they're coming to Ewood. Anything but three points for me is a really bad result for Rovers, especially if we want to keep up that playoff push. I know it's not likely that we're going to finish there come the end of the season, but these are the games that we'll look back on. We've done it so many times with Yorville. It comes up every time. We'll look back on it end of the season and think that should have been three points. So we've got to make sure this is a win. Yeah, we have. And um, just to go back to the point I was raising, so it is the West Brom and Fulham games. The two games that we've lost are the two games where we've not scored two goals at Ewood Park. In all of the other games, we have scored twice. And for me, you know, if we're scoring twice on Wednesday evening, then we're probably winning that we're game. Winning. And it would be yeah. nice to have the, the clean sheet as well. So, yeah, I'm like you, Dan. You know, I don't like to be arrogant. I don't like to disrespect sides. But, you know, when you just look at those underlying stats, if you look at the squad with the greatest respect to Peterborough, if we look at the players that we're going to potentially bring back into the starting eleven and the hunger that Mowbray's got in the squad, 
it is one that Rovers have got to be confident going into. And just to build on Peterborough a little bit more, you know, again, I looked into some of their other stats. There's nothing earth shattering in there for Peterborough, the kind of middle of the road for possession and passing. Um, but again, another damning stat for them, you know, when you think about them as an entertaining attacking side. They've had the lowest number of shots per game in the championship this season as well. So, really, if we're tight at the back, if we've got Ayala and Lenihan there as that settled back to, um, you know, if we don't panic, if we're patient, like that Hull and Reading game, you know, you did mention getting the job done in the first half. Actually, the Hull and Reading games were two games that we won 2 0, but we didn't score the goals until the second half. So, if it is 0 0 against half time, at, at half time against Peterborough, you know, we've already shown this season that we can be patient and we can get the job done. And if we've got players off the bench as well who can make an impact, then um, hopefully we can do it. So is that how you see it as well? Just a similar... I know you want the job done first half, but yeah. you take another Hull or Reading game if needs be. I was about to say, I think it's going to be like... It could easily be like the two Hull games the last two times we've played them. Mm. One of them, we're, we're frustrated for 65 minutes, 70 minutes. And then a goal comes, and then another goal comes, and maybe another one, and we end up winning two three now. Yeah, we haven't scored until the seventy fifth minute. I could it, it could easily be one of them, but as long as we got them three points in the bag, as more I'd say, pretty happy. That's it, and um, obviously it'll be remiss of us not to mention that the last time we played Peterborough uh, was that famous night, that Thursday night, I think it was, a weird day of the week, wasn't it, when um, we all but secured our promotion at home on that really magical night when uh, when we won the game 3-1, and it's the iconic celebration of Dax shirt being held up by Elliot Bennett as well, so um, yeah, how could we not forget that game? But, you know, let's do Peterborough a service here. What a night. Um, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, what a night. Um, let's just talk about them. Sekiri Dembele, Dan, um, he is a bit one of those players, unpredictable players, that's got um, a bit to his game, bags of pace, um, very tricky. And, you know, if he does catch Ayala or Lenihan out in behind, you know, he could cause us some problems on Wednesday night. So are you worried about his pace in behind or are you fancying Lenihan and Ayala to, to deal with him? The midfield battle is so essential, isn't it? I think having someone like Buckley and who can stop yes. that pass being played before it even gets there is going to be key for us I think we saw it so many times during the season we've been tackling with Grimes Callum O'Hare you could probably mention every game all in all with Chef United he's going to be another game where Buckley's going to be key in that midfield and he's going to stop them even getting the chance of playing it through so I think win that midfield battle and you know the game's ours yeah, definitely. And I think if we can cut out that service to Dembele and, and cut out that ball in behind that might just cause Ayala and, and Lenihan some problems, then absolutely I fancy us to have the basis to then go on and, and win the game and, and hopefully make it comfortable as well. Um, so let's talk about the starting eleven then, Dan. We've kind of made reference to it already. I've gone early with what I think the starting eleven should be. So... Um, are you in agreement with what I'm saying? So Kaminsky in goal, Pickering, Ayala, Lenihan, Nyambi. So you're thinking Edun or are you going Pickering? I think he'll go Edun, but I'd like to see Pickering. I think he might just say Pickering for a uh, stock on Saturday. Yeah. I think that's, what, like we said in the last preview, that's the issue with playing three times in a week. Yeah, You never know when someone's going to sit out a game. So we'll see. And Pickering coming back on a cold Wednesday night at Ewood Park and all of that. Yeah, I think you could be right, Dan. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if he did just keep Pickering in reserve. And Stoke's going to be a tough game, isn't it, on Saturday? And I think he'd much prefer Pickering for that game. So I want Pickering, but absolutely, Teo Edun has been brilliant for us this season. So got no problems with him at left back. So then midfield three for me, Dan, I've been singing its praises all season. I think it picks itself. Rothwell, Travis, Buckley. I think they complement each other really well. As you say, Buckley's great um, on that man-to-man -man mark on the number 10 role. Rothwell, obviously, the drive that he just brings, and that's something from nothing. And then Lewis Travis. I think Travis has been slowly getting better and better this season, actually, and might be just going a bit unnoticed, actually, with you know, the headlines that Brereton and Rothwell and Kadra and others have been grabbing. So he remains an important player for Rovers, doesn't he, Lewis Travis? Yeah, I do think he struggled a bit on Saturday, but I think it's one of them. 
I saw a few call for him to be subbed off instead. And as much as I like Jacob Davenport, and obviously I love Lewis Travis, Travis just brings that bite that no one else has. Yeah. And yes, he might have his off game or two, but you're always going to get that bite that you might not get with certain players. For me, that midfield three is if we stay around the top six and we're around there in two months, three months time, it'll be because that midfield three has remained consistent for me. You can change yeah. the attack, you can change the defence a bit, but keep that midfield free, and I think we're yeah, we're looking good. Definitely. And then in terms of the front three, Tyrese Dolan was obviously on the bench on Saturday. I think, you know, I want him right back in this side. Hopefully he's buzzing with confidence after that award this evening as well. So definitely Dolan and Brereton, um, you know, they're kind of picking themselves this season. Slight doubts over Sam Gallagher remain. Um, maybe the same reasons that you said about Pickering and Eddon, the same could be applied to Sam Gallagher if he is nursing an injury and it's cold. And certainly Stoke away is a game where you want Sam Gallagher. So if Sam Gallagher doesn't make it, obviously, hopefully Ian Pervader's injury isn't too serious. Really, it's probably going to be Red Kadra, isn't it, if Sam Gallagher doesn't make it. So Gallagher or Kadra, if Gallagher's fit, I'd like to see Gallagher back, but maybe this is a game for Kadra. You know, if it's a side in Peterborough where they're not going to threaten us that much, um, and Mowbray isn't as worried about the kind of defensive side that Sam Gallagher brings, then yeah, maybe this is the game to unleash Redder Kadra and see what he can do in front of the Ewood faithful because we saw it against Hull, didn't we? Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. So, Rovers fans, that's the starting eleven Dan and I have agreed on. Maybe question mark over Harry Pickering, particularly if he's not going to risk him, but I think we'd like to see Pickering if we can, um, but totally understand if it's Edun. And, yeah, with the doubt over Gallagher, um, maybe it's going to be Red Akadra, but I just love the look of that side. You know, it's settled, it picks itself, and no surprises that we're kind of higher up in the table this season when we're able to pick that. 11, you know, in, in the majority of the games that we've played. Um, so, Dan, final order of business then. You know, this has probably been a little bit of a shorter match preview because really there's no point over in the pudding, you know, with the greatest respect to Peterborough. They're a promoted side. They're struggling away from home. They struggle to score goals away from home. They struggle to create chances away from home. Rover's home form has been overall solid this season. So in terms of a match preview, there's no point overanalyzing it. It's a game that Rovers have just got to go and be confident, go and get the job done. So your prediction, Dan, do you fancy us to get the job done? I do what I'll go for. I'll go for a repeat of that League One performance. I'll go 3-1 Rovers. 3-1. So you fancy him to score. Interesting. Just a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a, Consolation goal at 3 0, 2 0, maybe. I just say, I don't like predicting us to keep clean sheets because it usually goes to, to pot a bit. <laughs> so Dan is going 3 1. Uh, do I have fancies for the clean sheet? Um, I think we just look so comfortable when we've got Ayala at the back. Do you know what? I'm going to do it, Dan, and I'm going to say 3 0. I'm going to say 3 0. <laughs> I think the players are full of confidence um, and I think this is a game that Mowbray will hopefully not be too worried about what Peterborough have got in attack um, with the stats that they've had this season. So, Ewood's been largely okay this season. So, there you go, Rovers fans. Dan and I have done it. We've done it. We've jinxed us. We're being overconfident. <laughs> but no, Typical it'll... one. We need Alex back. We do. We need Alex to kind of bring us back down to earth. But I tell you what, you know, if you can't be confident playing against a side that's lost eight out of nine games away from home, then what are we doing on a match preview? Not predicting a Rovers win, eh, Dan? So there yeah, we go. That's it. That's... Let us know what you think in the comments, Rovers fans. You know, it's with the greatest respect to Peterborough, this match preview. You know, you've just got to be confident as a fan going in. But let us know what you think in the comments. Do you agree with Dan and I? Um, do you disagree with me saying we're going to keep a clean sheet or are you airing on the side of Dan where you can see that consolation goal or or maybe even like that Peterborough promotion game, Dan, where they score first and we have to come from behind? You never know. You absolutely... Hey, fingers crossed it isn't. I can't put up with another one of them. <laughs> but uh, for those of you at the Rovers game, do enjoy it if you're there and wrap up warm. It is going to be very cold. Um, if you're not at the game, Dan, what's the arrangements for any watch along this midweek? Have we got anyone on duty? No, there's no watch along this week. There'll still be the instant reaction and 
hopefully the match day experience. So we've got that coming. Yeah, that usual stuff will be there. So uh, if you want watch along, it'll be back with Jared on Saturday for the Stoke game. So um, yeah, you'll have to get your fix elsewhere uh, or get to Ewood Park if you can make it. Yeah, get to Ewood. Get yourself to Ewood, go and do it. Go and keep everyone warm. But um, no, thank you for watching this video. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button. Please give this video a big like. And if you're at the game, enjoy it. If not, we'll see you soon with our usual content. See you later. Deal. The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below.